What's up Hudson Valley? This is Bill Potter, Senior Forecaster with Hudson Valley Weather and this is your Winter Outlook Update video. In early November Alex and I had released the 1516 Hudson Valley Weather Winter Outlook and in there we take a look at the upcoming winter, December, January, and February more specifically which is meteorological winter and try to project out what the pattern might be and what kind of weather we might see uh, in the upcoming winter. In that outlook, which we'll post a link to in the description box below, um, you'll notice you'll have noticed that we had called for uh, temperatures uh, about a half a degree to one and a half degrees below average for the entire winter. And uh, in addition to that, we had snowfall uh, 25 to 50 percent above normal for the entire winter and that's again the three month period from December through February. Now we are in the middle of December. We are about uh, 30 to 45 days removed from the release of the original outlook. So what we want to do is take a look at what's happened since then and try and provide some answers to some questions that may have been popping up over the course of the last weeks. Um, with all the warmth that we've seen, um, we have a lot of questions coming through as far as what happened to winter, are we going to have a winter, um, is the El Nino going to cancel winter, um, and so it's provided a, a mixed bag of emotions from from uh, viewers in terms of uh, winter haters have been celebrating and rejoicing while the winter lovers are pressing the panic button and heading for the hills because there hasn't, in, hasn't even been a sign of snow or any hope of prospect of snow. So what we want to do is we want to try and take a look and uh, you know just bring you up to speed as far as where we are. So without any further ado let's start with the temperature anomaly map for the month of December so far and again this is the first 11 days of December and it's going to show you temperature departures from normal and what you can see immediately is all of this warmth focused in central Canada alright where temperatures have been anywhere from 8 to 12 even 13 degrees Celsius above average which translates into anywhere from about 15 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you know, I mean, without getting into the numbers too much, it's just been incredibly warm in this area compared to normal. I mean, it's been warm across the entire United States, but uh, in the upper Midwest and especially in central Canada, it's just been unprecedented warmth, really. And uh, that's pretty much all we've had to talk about was warm warm and more warmth um, so in the Hudson Valley here you can see on the map we show about three to six degrees above average which is right on target because uh, while this map is Celsius uh, the Hudson Valley is about right on around I believe Poughkeepsie is eight degrees Fahrenheit above average as of today for the month of December so very warm well what were we expecting with you know with to see in this month of December and the answer is warmth we were expecting to see the country as a whole pretty much above average especially in the northern half of the country with any areas that could be near or below average focused really in the very southern half uh, the southern edge of the country and you can see the focus was to have the warmth concentrated in the upper Midwest and that's what we've had so far. Now the entire country has seen the warmth so it's a little bit warmer than what we had projected but still the, the theme was warm. The details are really hard to get to nail down in a long range outlook but the key is is that we were expecting warmth and that's what we've gotten warmth. So no major surprises there so things are kind of on track to start out so what we do next is we want to say well what does the sea surface temperatures look like because that's one of the things we use to project out for the winter and the November sea surface temperatures show the El Nino very well the El Nino shows up great on this map you can see all this warmth here in the tropical Pacific you can see a tremendous amount of warm water off of the western coast of North America runs all the way from Alaska to the equator and there's a little bit of a cool pocket not much of one north of Hawaii so those three things are really key elements that we look for and so we want to we look back throughout 
the last 50, 60 years of, of records, and one year really jumps out as far as being a very close comparison to what we have this year, and that year was the winter of 57, 58. And this is what the sea surface temperatures look like in that year. You notice that El Nino, while not as strong, still very much there. We have the warmth that extends all the way from uh, Alaska all the way to the equator. It's a pretty strong band of above average water. And we also have a slightly cool pocket north of Hawaii. So while not exact, it's definitely a close comparison. It's one of the closest, if not the closest, comparison that we can find in the last 50 to 60 years. So the question we ask then is, well, what was the December like in that winter? You know, when the, when the sea surface temperatures were that close, what was the result? And the result was a very warm December for the entire United States of America, the exception being Florida. You'll see the, the very concentrated warmth in the Midwest here. You have the concentrated warmth again in the Northeast. And, and that's very consistent with what we've seen. So, you know, this is what we've seen after 11 days. This is what we saw for an entire month when the patterns were very similar. So, no major surprises. Things are kind of going according to plan. I mean, every year is different, but when you, you look at the details and say, well, this is what happened when conditions were like they are now, so no major surprises. So when we look at the pattern that creates that weather, you'll notice a huge ridge of high pressure in the Pacific Ocean, a dip or a trough in the jet stream uh, in the western United States and a huge ridge of high pressure in the east. And this has been the pattern that's been in play for the last 45 days, but this is specifically November. So basically you have all the storminess out west and all the warmth in the east. And I mean that's pretty much it's pretty much cut and dry why the weather pattern has been what it has been, why we haven't been able to break out of it, because this pattern just won't won't snap whatsoever. So this right here is the map for today. This is what the, the same 500 millibar uh, jet stream map looks like for today. And you'll notice this was the entire month of November and this is our current pattern. It's identical. <laughs> ridge out over the Pacific, trough out west, big ridge in the east, then you get the ridge out in the Pacific, the trough out west where there's a currently a storm that's been dumping a ton of rain in the upper in the uh, upper northwest and then you've got the big ridge of high pressure in the east which is allowing us to challenge record highs once again in the next couple of days so we wanted to look at well what are we projecting forward what does january look like well this is a computer model printout this is the canadian model uh... january outlook and what you'll see here is a much different pattern all right this is what we're in now this pattern is completely different you have a, a major dip in the jet stream a huge trough in the gulf of alaska you've got a massive ridge of high pressure up in uh, Canada so it shifts north from from being over this area it shifts north into Canada and that allows this trough to cut underneath the ridge of high pressure in the southeast United States so you kinda have two factors at play now now you have the subtropical jet which continues to slide underneath and will bring storminess across the southern tier of the United States but simultaneously now we're allowing to see the the uh, polar jet get involved a little bit and it's going to try and bring some cold air down from time to time from Canada and when we look back to the winter of 57 58 again this was January of 1958 and you'll notice a huge trough in the Gulf of Alaska a big ridge of high pressure over the uh, central part of Alaska excuse me of Canada rather and you'll notice the dip in the jet stream this uh, weak trough that we've got, this weakness in the southeast United States. And again, so you have the jet that's going to be able to cut underneath, and you have the, the uh, polar jet trying to, to get into get into things, trying to get into the equation, get into the mix, and, and, give, and you know, have an impact on our weather. So this is what happened in 1958, and this is what our computer model is projecting. Notice the similarities once again to that year. I mean, it's it's almost kind of eerie how close they are, all right? And so the next question you ask is, well, what happened in 1958 when the pattern was like what we're forecasting? And the answer is much cooler 
conditions over the uh, southeast United States. All right, you still have the warmth up in the upper Midwest and trying to hold on in New England. But really what this is indicative of is a lot of storminess and a battleground that you have setting up between, you know, storm tracks and boundary layers. And, and, and so there's a lot of a lot going on in this in this uh, time period in 1958. So is a very active pattern and it also is consistent with what our projection was for January so no major deviations from what we saw in the past and what we're expecting as conditions are very similar now so then we're gonna look forward to see well we know what the pattern is now what what's coming down the road in the next 10 to 15 days do we have any chance at breaking this pattern do we have any chance at cold and snow or is the warmth going to be locked in so this map that you're looking at now is for seven days from now it's for friday december 18th and you'll notice the pattern is much different than the one that we showed you that's currently in place instead of a big ridge in the east you have this trough trying to dip in which should allow some cold air to come down from canada for the first time in quite a while and instead of a big trough with storminess out west, we have a, a weak ridge trying to build, which should dry things out and calm the weather pattern down for at least a day or two out west. It's pretty much a reversal of the pattern. But the one thing that you'll notice is just two days after this image, we go right back to the pattern that's currently in place. Big ridge in the east, trough and storminess in the west, and you've got this big ridge again in the Gulf of Alaska. So the 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 thing that you're noticing now is transients in the pattern where we just are going back and forth from one pattern to the next and the jet streams trying to figure out where it wants to settle in and the pattern that we've been in is so strong and it's been so persistent that you're not just going to break out of it right away the the, the atmosphere is going to try to move things around a little bit but it's kind of like got that memory where it just wants to go back to the pattern that it's familiar with so we're going to see some shots of cold air come through. We're going to see this pattern break up from time to time, but it's a question of how long it takes to really end the pattern. Because when we look a little bit further down the road, this is um, about 15 days away. This is uh, a couple of days after Christmas, January, excuse me, December 28th. And you'll notice that we've got the cold that's trying to infiltrate back into the country. And this pattern is, is a really quite a cold one for the United States as a whole. Not so much for our area because the warmth is really trying to hold on. But it's an active pattern. You have a lot of storminess coming across the country. You have cold air trying to get involved in the pattern. And if you can get the storms to interact with the cold at just the right time, even though it's been really warm, all it takes is good timing to get a storm and to make it snow. And we're going to see at least some chances where we actually have to pay attention to the potential for snowstorms and for wintry weather and at least a, some sign that it actually is December instead of it being <laughs> feeling like it's October. And uh, you know, just being a little bit more resemblant of what we would expect for this time of the year. So that's pretty much where we're at. We have no real changes to our winter outlook at this point. We're comfortable, reasonably comfortable, as comfortable as you can be when you're doing a long range forecast. We don't see any signs that, that make us jump up and say, whoa, whoa, the pattern's not what we expected, so we need to change our ideas. We don't see anything like that yet. But again, just because our outlook calls for a shift in the pattern, it's no guarantee. I mean, everything should play out as expected. You know, if we're going through a checklist, we're checking off all the boxes and everything's looking good. But, you know, we still actually need to see the result that we're calling for before we can get too confident with our winter outlook. But, you know, it's it's been an extremely warm stretch and we'll see if we can start to break it up and at least mix up the pattern a little bit. I know that'll upset a lot of you winter weather haters, but, um, you know, you almost knew it was too good to be true, so can't last forever, so we'll see. But uh, that wraps this video up. It was really long, and I'm so sorry, but um, I hope you liked the video. Let us know what you thought. Um, you know, please uh, leave us some comments on the Facebook page or in the in the comment section below. And uh, let us know if you want to see more of these, if you liked it, what you didn't like. And, uh, you know, we just appreciate your support. We really do. You guys are tremendous. And uh, you keep Alex and I going. So thank you for that. 
And uh, thank you for watching. We appreciate everything. And we hope to see you back here soon. Bye.